it became a full-time job because I became pregnant. And you can't really work in a test kitchen and try all these different ingredients and liquors and stuff when you're like seven months pregnant. It doesn't work out. <laughs> I've always loved the idea of food and making it as a, a skill set. Like I appreciated it, but I never thought that I could really be a cook. And then I kind of thought about my relationship with food and about a lot of my friends' relationships with food. We would do starvation diets, you know, like terrible things to our bodies because we didn't understand like how food was and the science behind it. And after going to culinary school and working in a professional restaurant, I have a better relationship to it where it's like food is pleasure, it's culture, you can tell stories, you can connect with different families based upon the food that they eat. It helped me kind of create what we're doing at Coast right now, which is creating a conversation that starts with food. I never thought I was gonna be a mom, actually. Um, I had a, a really strong working mom who was never around, but I respected her. She like definitely taught me so many of the things that I need to know about being a professional and just customer service and just being just a powerful go-getter. But was she there to pick us up all the time? Was she there to like see our, you know, our performances? Not really. And so I didn't think I could juggle that. I didn't think it, I had it in me. Like I was always the lady that was on the plane that was like, oh God, please don't let the kids sit next to me, you know? But but now I've, I've like completely changed. When my son was about two years old, I lost my mother-in-law. She passed away from cancer and it was one of the those incidences where she was trying to protect, I think, her sons and the rest of the family, so she didn't want to let us know how severe it was. So I wanted to tell my son, like, no, everything is fine. We're all good, we're happy. Like, yes, Oma's sick, but it's okay. She's gonna get better. Like, knowing in the back of my head, this might not happen, right? And so because of that, my son actually had an issue where he stopped going to the restroom. Like, like, this is TMI, but this is for moms, right? He stopped going to the restroom for like two weeks at a time. And so I was freaking out. My husband's freaking out. Like, this is obviously not normal. So we go and see a bunch of different specialists. They do tests on him. It turns out he's completely physically normal. It's a mental block. As crazy as it is, we took him to see a child's therapist. But it was a, an amazing eye-opener. And it kind of gave me permission as a parent to admit, like, I don't have all the answers. And this is the first time I'm doing this. Like I've never been a mom before and I, I'm gonna stumble, I'm gonna learn. And the freedom to like actually admit that out loud is like very powerful. And at the same time, it's so freeing because it's like, oh my God, I don't have to have all the answers. Like it's good. There's so many days where we're just like schlepping. You have to get them to school. You have to like do all the basic errands and you find out like, you don't talk to each other so great. Like you're kind of mean or rude or abrupt. And like, I would think about conversations sometimes I would have with my son or with my daughter where I would just be so short and I would never talk to any other human being that way. And it's like, I'm their mother. I'm supposed to be a kind, like loving, supportive figure. At the end of the day, remember who you are, what you stand for, and your kids are great. They're gonna figure it out. Have confidence in them. They're gonna figure it out. Yeah. <laughs>